you know, some things that we just talked about is basically how us Persians, we've, uh, as a family for generations, have swept things under our Persian rugs, uh, you know, and, and not discuss things openly. And um, one other topic that uh, families have not talked about in more detail is mental health in general. And, you know, your, your family has not had any shortage of uh, tragedies as it relates to suicide as well. And, um, you know, depression and anxiety uh, are, are things that no matter where you're from, uh, every human being goes through it, you know, and yet still Persians are still very behind in being able to communicate and reach out to get the help that they need. And based on your experience, especially Shah um what, what advice can you give to uh, Persian families to ensure that they don't ever lose a, a loved one um, when, when, when they're battling through uh, these, these, these storms? on their own. So if you have any advice that you can give with regards to mental health, I would greatly appreciate that. Oh, well, I mean, look, uh, I still don't know if you talk to a psychiatrist or a specialist of how depression can be resolved. Uh, I think it's one of those deals that no matter how much support you want to put around that person, whether it's voluntary or involuntary uh, sub, uh, to a, a, an institution to take care of it, uh, if, if that individual doesn't want to reach for the rope you throw to them or is in total denial, it doesn't matter what you try to do. And it's very, it's a very, very lonely problem. Uh, I noticed that both in the, my siblings who ultimately succumbed to it by committing suicide. But it's not that we were not around them. It's not that we didn't try to address it. It's not that we didn't try to suggest some thoughts to them. It's just that at the end, they have to be able to come up with the, with their own motivation to to deal with the problem. I don't know what kind of uh, factors that surrounds an individual contributes to their sense of abandonment or hopelessness, whatever it is that that ultimately pushes them over the precipice. Because uh, I can understand in cases where people are completely alone. They have no friends. They have no relatives. They don't have a place to live in. They are in a dire economic situation. But what about people who are well surrounded, don't have any such problems, and still they are depressed, and they still end up committing suicide? I don't really know what a special think, answer is to that. I think the um, I think the thing that probably he doesn't want to talk about is that I think the impact uh, of the revolution, uh, watching um, their father uh, be hospitalized, and hearing the uh, angry mobs outside of his hospital room in New York, having to be uh, dis dislocated from one place to the next, not feeling safe, feeling like everyone had abandoned you and your family, seeing your uh, parents in such distress, being displaced the way everybody was. I think Iris and Leila were both at a very sensitive age, uh, more so than maybe Reza and Farhanaz. Uh, but I think all the children were, based on my conversations and my seeing my in-laws, uh, there was such a deep trauma from all of it. And I think because everybody was traumatized, there was a situation where probably people couldn't help each other. It's, you know, you have to put the oxygen mask on for yourself first before you can put it on the child. And I think the trauma was all around uh, for everyone and everybody was just trying to survive. And I think the sad truth of it is, is that um, despite a lot of attempts to try to bring back Leila and bring back Ayreza to a place where they could see some positives in their lives, they were in a dark place. And I think it was a long journey um, those first days of the revolution. <laughs> so, so Shazad, looking back, are, are there any warning signs that you, you think that um, were there that unfortunately were overlooked looking back? But I don't think you can replicate the story of what we had to go through. It's rather unique and it happens so few times in, in history to right. be such a traumatic uh, set of circumstances and, and, and what happens. So I don't know if you could say it's like catching a cold and what, how you treat a cold once you get one. Um, uh, all I can say is that for what it's worth as a particular story of circumstance, uh, when you think of how 
the medical doctors deal with uh, people who suffer from uh, PTSD, for instance. Uh, uh, what are the basic uh, uh, guidelines as to how to cope with it or how to prepare yourself uh, if, should it reoccur in some form or shape in, on other occasions in the future? Mm, I, I, I would say that Again, the more there is discussion on the matter, the more there is uh, a sense of it could happen to anyone at any time. Uh, it will help people be at least not uh, shocked if it were to occur, they will be better prepared should it occur. And I hope it doesn't for anyone, but uh, we can't, you cannot say <laughs> never uh, it could happen, but to be more ready. And uh, again, I think, uh, uh, the more society talks about these matters, the more you feel like you're not isolated, you're not alone, you're not in prison. Uh, yeah. Everybody understands support. it. Everybody can yeah. empathize or sympathize or offer yeah. support. Back yeah. then, maybe there wasn't as much conversation. No. There was really very... There, I think things have improved so much in mental health awareness, uh, at least in this school. I do think that back in that time when Leila was not feeling right, um, there was less uh, information available, still kind of a taboo about mental health issues. And uh, I think that hopefully that has changed a lot. So young people do have uh, a better understanding of, you know, how this is something that happens to a lot of people and that there's support out there that they should ask for help. You know, before they and, of, and of course, I must uh, just say, in the case of my sister, it started more with an eating disorder, but then it also led to depression, and one right. oh, impacted the other. So while you were trying to get better on one side, the other side will kick in, and vice versa. So she could never get out of this sort of uh, perfect storm of two yeah. things at the same time, which compounded the problem and made it far more difficult for her to, most importantly, try to save herself, and for those of us trying to to be of help. So that's also another thing that could be uh, studied as to a, a double whammy type uh, scenario of uh, not just one thing that is purely uh, eating disorder or purely uh, a mental issue, but a combination of both, which uh, exacerbates the problem. Absolutely. I'm sure there's definitely a compound effect of multiple things that kind of uh, come together to create this perfect storm. What, what do you think, uh, if you don't mind, just one last question about this topic is what differentiated you and how you because you, you obviously experienced the same tragedy, the same, uh, um, you know, in, uh, incredible experiences of, of hardship. What what kept you strong? What kept you level headed? What did, is there something that you did to um, keep yourself positive and and fight through this? Do you have something that kind of um, kept you going? Yeah, I think the simple answer is to have a sense of purpose and a focus on something to do. Uh, it was not until at least a month after my father passed away that it finally sunk on me and my mother. Oh, she lost her husband and I lost her father. We immediately propelled into, okay, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to say? What are people going to expect? And then since then, and of course, the whole country and of course the war and so many other aspects just dragged me straight into uh, a scenario that is now almost 40 years and counting of doing everything uh, I can uh, to help uh, save Iran. So I did have uh, a sense of a mission and purpose, if you could call it that. So maybe all of that kept me focused on something, not to be dragged into uh, yeah, uh, things that maybe my siblings did, did not immediately uh, sense, that be right. too busy thinking of something and, and, and getting dragged into that negative aspect of falling into depression or what have you. And I must say also that regretfully, and not because it was intentional, in the early years, uh, uh, maybe, and I'm not saying it would have resolved the problem, but as the older brother and as the only, the, 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 I can say, the, the male in the family with uh, my father not being there and my mother having so many issues on her back, uh, perhaps uh, the fact that we were not together uh, because we were all scattered. Um, I lived three years in Morocco, a year after my father passed away. My siblings were by then living in the United States. Uh, we were not as a family under the same roof. Uh, in fact, I don't think we ever have been in a scenario where we're all un un under the same roof. So maybe that vacuum was something that could have given there uh, a little bit more 
uh, of um, at least, uh, uh, as we say, for see, take a go or something to lean on. Um, maybe it could have made a difference. We did communicate, but it's not enough. It's different than we're talking over the phone as opposed to being in the same room and uh, uh, hugging each other if somebody doesn't sleep that night and they had a nightmare or they're crying and they're upset and they want to simply have a, uh, you know, a, a, cry, a shoulder to cry on. But also you have to, I mean, he was also very young. So you were 17, 18 when everything was happening. And I don't think you should consider, I mean, I really don't think you had any options. People pushed you in the direction that you were in. And I think the family aspect and and sort of what we were started with earlier when we were talking about how do you deal with a teenager? You know, as I said, you have to be there. You have to be aware uh, because things happen and, and if you, they may not speak about it, but you should, if you're there, you can see it, you can feel it. Right. And in this circumstance, um, both my husband and my mother-in-law were unfortunately dragged into a whole other uh, situation where it was just a matter of survival. So everybody suffered. There's also a distinct change uh, between generations because, you know, when you look at our parents' generation, the culture of not saying things as opposed to be open about things is totally different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in our family, we don't shy away from bringing any subject up because we think talking about it is better than ignoring it or pretending it's not there. It's, I think it's a generational thing. I know a lot of Iranians, younger generation will probably agree with me on that, that uh, there are things that today they talk among themselves or if they have children with their children that they would never have th that kind of conversation with their parents. So maybe generationally, there's also a change there. So we try not to do uh, that that our parents' generation did. On the contrary, we like to be open so no stone is left unturned, so to speak. Well, I mean, it's definitely great that the new generation is starting to open up more. And I think that just hearing these words coming from both of you and seeing how you are very open about talking these things and open to have these um, honest and vulnerable discussions within your family will hopefully lead to a little spark in other families, especially Persians, to do the same thing. Because I, I wholeheartedly believe that through conversations, we can save people from depression, from, from taking their own lives, um, you know, just being there for each other, empathy, sympathy, and just, you know, showing them love and support. Uh, those all go a long way. So I greatly appreciate it. These are really key words because I think one of the issues that I would say particularly in our Farhangi Iruni is still there from parents is that you can do the best you can as a parent to help your children be equipped with the kind of education and knowledge so they can fend better for themselves down in life. You cannot live their lives for them. Yeah. As parents, we have to understand that at some point, our children will have to stand on their own feet. We cannot be there every time there is trouble. Uh, they have to be independent. They have to be able to depend on themselves. We cannot live their lives for them. That's so important. And this is part of our way of thinking as a traditional society to a more modern one. I think this is one of the very key aspects that could make a good gift. They're just not equipped that way. I mean, yeah. our gen our, my parents definitely were not equipped for that level of uh, discussion and thinking. They, they, they wanted... They were they were aware if I was doing well or not doing well, but yeah. as far as having the 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 uh, vocabulary and uh, you know it's just it just wasn't it wasn't uh, available to them. Remember what I said earlier about living your life according to your own expectations, not of others. Again, another I think negative traits in our culture is that uh, we are worried about perception, what yeah. other people think. Mardom chimiga. Yes. And what's important is uh, what you believe. Well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. part of the problem. It's always based on other people's expectation. Yeah. And I think that's adding insult to injury because you're not giving them a sense of confidence. You're giving them a sense that they have to always fear to be judged. And that's not a way to form character. Uh, no, beautiful said, and I actually saw a little thing a couple of days ago where you shouldn't tell somebody that I'm proud of you. You should tell them, aren't you proud of yourself? You know, so that way they learn to kind of just, you know, accept that they don't need to uh, validation from anybody else, essentially, you know, so that's um, all, all great stuff. I mean, I feel like we could go hours talking about these kind of things. And I hope that this conversation as it pertains to mental health uh, will hopefully, uh, again, spark some conversations amongst other families. 
Awesome people, I appreciate you watching this segment. To watch the full video, which you should, please click up here. And then if you want to join our text community, the number is right about here. And even though you don't need no reminders and you've heard a billion times, if you like, like the video, subscribe, hit the little ring of ding a ding ding bell so you can be notified for our next video. Thank you so much and appreciate you watching. Awesome people.